Hello, this is Daniel Fritz Mathematics, and we're coming back to you again with another segment of amplitude and period, where we're talking about graphing sine and cosine functions. Uh, earlier videos, we talked about uh, graphing sine and cosine functions using some transformation techniques. And now, we're going to talk about some other techniques in graphing uh, sine and cosine functions. And let's first look at this theorem. If omega is greater than zero, the amplitude and period of y is equal to sine of omega times x, and y is equal to cosine of omega times x, and this is given by what? The amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a, and the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. Now, we want to determine the amplitude and period of y is equal to times sine of 4x. And now, the solution, we want to compare y is equal to 3 uh, times sine for x to y is equal to a times sine uh, omega x. And we want to find that. And we find that. We find that a in this particular case, see, is equal to 3. Because right here, that this a, or the number or the value or the constant that is in front of the, the, the trig function is considered the amplitude. Now, and we want to consider that omega is equal to what? 4, because it's represented by this value here in this position. So that is your omega value. And from the theorem, we have that the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a, which is absolute value of 3, which is 3. And the period to go to t is equal to 2 times pi over omega. And that's going to be 2 pi divided by this 4 here, which goes in place where omega is there. So that takes the place of the value. So then when we reduce that, we have the period at pi over 2. Let's do another problem. Example two, we also too want to, want to determine the amplitude and period of y is equal to four times the cosine of one half x. So our solution again, we want to compare that to y is equal to a times cosine omega x, right? Here, this or this numerical value is considered as a, the amplitude, and also the Omega value is represented here, and that's one half. So that's right. So we put this into the formula, and so we want to know what the period is. We know that the amplitude is equal to four, and that the period is going to equal to here. After we do a little bit of math, uh, it's going to be four pi for this problem. So your amplitude will be four, and of course your period will be 4 pi for this problem. Now, let's talk about a few other things. If you follow me to the backboard here. We want to talk about graphing sinusoidal functions using key points. The figure, double A, shows uh, the cycle of the graph of y is equal to sine x and y is equal to what? Cosine x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So notice that each of the graphs consists of four parts corresponding to the four sub-intervals. And so we have here 0 to pi over 2, and from pi over 2 to pi, and from pi to 3 pi over 2, and then also from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Now, each sub-interval is a length of pi over 2, and the period 2 pi is divided by 4. So this is how you get your, your four values here when, you, when you're actually making the graph, right? And you actually split equal spaces on the graph there. It's the numbers of parts. So here, when you take the period 2 pi and divide it by 4, the number, that's the number of parts there on the graph there, which you're trying to uh, equally space out to get a nice, uh, smooth curve there. And the endpoints. Well, these intervals is what? X is equal to 0, 
x is equal to pi over 2, x is equal to pi, and x is equal to 3 pi over 2, and x is equal to 2 pi. Okay, and this gives you, uh, gives the five key parts here, and for y is equal to sine x, we have 0, 0, pi over 2 and 1, and we have pi and, and 0, right? And we have 3 pi over 2 and negative 1, and we have 2 pi and 0. Now, for the function of y is equal to cosine x, we have 0 and 1, we have pi over 2 and 0, we have pi and negative 1, and we have 3 pi over 2 and 0, and 2 pi and 1. Now, look at the graph again. As we have this split up here like so, then you can look at the graphs and tell that these numbers and values are related. Well, let's talk about how the graph of sinusoidal function using the key, po key points. Now, the example here, we're going to go in detail and we're going to talk about this in steps. We're going to talk about this in steps of how to graph sinusoidal graphs using, these, using this technique. So step one, you want to determine the amplitude and period of the sinusoidal function. So comparing again, y is equal to 3 times sine of 4x to y is equal to a times sine omega x. We see that a, again, is the amplitude, right, a, and that the omega is equal to 4. So that the amplitude, of course, is the absolute value of 3, which is 3, and the period of this is going to be pi over 2. You see this. So because the amplitude is 3, in the graph of y is equal to 3 sine, 3 times sine, uh, 4, 4x. Four now, yeah, a lie between negative 3 and 3. Of course, when you have the amplitude there, and the actual graph, those values will lie between these two points right here on the y-axis, right? So because of the period is, of course, 2 pi, and one cycle will start at x is equal to 0 and end at x is equal to 1, pi over 2. So step 2 now, we want to divide uh, the intervals, OK? From the, the intervals here, pi, uh, 0 to 2 pi over omega into four sub-intervals of the same length. So we're going to divide the intervals, 0 to pi over 2 in this case, into four sub intervals each of the lengths. Now this will be pi over 2 divided by 4, which will give you pi divided by 8, as follows. Look at this very closely. So we have 0 to pi over 8. Now we have pi over 8. Now look at this. Pi over 8 plus pi over 8 will give us also what? Pi over 4, when we, we want to reduce it. So it will be pi over 8 and then pi over 4 there. And then we go pi over 4 here. And then pi over 4 will be added, right? Will be added to eight, pi over 8. And that's going to give us what? That's going to give us 3 pi over 8, right? So we have the interval here, four, uh, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 8. And then as you go along here, 3 pi over 8. And then we take on 3 pi over 8 plus pi over 8. And then we'll get our last interval, and then 3 pi over 8. And we get what? From that, pi over 2. So as we continue on with, here's our sub intervals here. That's going to be 0. We got pi over 8, pi over 4, 3 pi over 8. And here we got pi over 2. So these values represent the x-coordinates of the five key points on the graph. Now, number, step number three, if you will, we want to use the endpoints of these sub-intervals to obtain the five key points and to obtain the y-coordinates of the five key points of what? This here, y is equal to three times the sine of what? 4x. Four, four we want to multiply the y coordinates of the key points for the for, for y is equal to sine x by a is equal to what? 3. Of course, whenever you have the regular sine function, as we call it, y is equal to uh, sine x. And of course, whenever you multiply a value, right, do that function. Remember, we talked about vertical, vertical shifts. 
and transformation. We have the five key points here. We have zero, zero, pi over eight, and three, pi over four is zero, and three pi over, pi over eight, and negative three, and pi over two, and zero. Now, lastly, we want to talk about the graphs here, briefly. Step four, we want to plot. We want to plot the five key points and draw a sinusoidal graph to obtain the graph of one cycle. Extend the graph in each direction to make it complete, right? So in this particular case, we just wanted to graph the sinusoidal function, which is y is equal to what? Three sine four x. We just want to basically concern ourselves with graphing using the five key points. We weren't really talking about transformation in this particular point of, of the lesson. However, I just wanted to make mention of that. That's what amplitudes do when you're actually comparing uh, the regular sine y is equal to y is equal to sine x, as opposed to y is equal to three times sine four. Just basically what we have here is the graph. We have the regular, I said we have the amplitude, which is three, and of course, we have one cycle, we have one period, right? And then after that, we extend those periods, right? And of course, you have this coming from negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. And of course, this concludes the segment of uh, graphing sine and cosine functions using the five key points. And of course, we're gonna talk about this later again in our future videos to come.